Chelsea Football Club are set to make a third bid and are growing in confidence that they can land Lukaku this summer as their primary number nine target. We know that a lot of work has gone on behind the scenes to try and land the Borussia Dortmund and Norwegian striker Erling Haaland with a reported deadline set for the end of this week. But Chelsea were always looking at alternatives. Chelsea were always looking at a foul safe should their £150 million pursuit of Haaland not be successful. That's reported by The Athletic this morning that two bids have already gone in for Lukaku. And although they've been turned down and publicly Inter Milan and Lukaku have spoke a number of times about being happy in Italy and no move being possible, Chelsea are continuing to pursue the transfer. Now, why this is interesting is one major area. Chelsea are not a badly run club. Chelsea's board are not stupid. Chelsea Football Club would not actively work on a signing if there was no possibility of it happening. It's still a difficult deal to get done, and it's still a difficult deal to get over the line. But it's an advanced transfer. When you're about to make your third offer or your third bid, whichever narrative you prefer to spin, that's an advanced situation. That should tell every single Chelsea fan that there is confidence at the Chelsea camp that the player would join if a bid is accepted. And this comes just a few days after we were told that Inter Milan were willing to sell Lotaro Martinez to ensure they raise enough money to be able to keep Lukaku. This could be good and bad news at the same time for Arsenal. It could mean Inter push harder for them to land their target in Martinez over the coming days. So they're forced into a position where they put themselves into a position where they're not forced to lose Lukaku. But at the same time, if Lukaku to Chelsea happens this week and there's a lot of talk of Chelsea finalising their striker position in the next seven days, this could end Arsenal's chances altogether of taking Lotaro from Serie A to the Premier League. We've got a poll running right now live in the chat asking which of the two strikers, Lukaku or Haaland, you think Chelsea are going to land right now. Haaland, Lukaku or Neva. Get your votes in. Make sure you smash that like button. Chelsea going in for Lukaku is on. It's advanced and a third bid is incoming. Let's go, people. Good morning and welcome back to the Terrace. I hope you're all doing very, very well indeed. Big breaking news this morning from The Athletic. For me, via the brilliant Simon Phillips, who put this news out very early this morning. And Chelsea have made two offers so far this summer for Lukaku. They're looking to make a third. Their striker situation could be resolved this week. It's interesting to see what's going to happen with the Haaland situation. I want your views and I want your opinions as well uh, on this matter. Um, comment here. This is this is the thing about the third bid. A lot of people are asking where the third bid has come from. Chelsea have made two bids for, for, for Lukaku, which is a strong signal of intent. It also provides an indication on where they see themselves now with the Haaland situation. But when you go through the article, it says they... Be- they believe that despite Lukaku's public comments at being happy at Milan and also the club that are keen to hold on to him, they say Chelsea do feel they can, they can, uh, a deal can be done here. Now, if Chelsea feel like a deal can be done here, they're going to submit another offer, aren't they? Again, you don't often, you don't always need someone to say a bid is coming for them to say a bid is coming. Learn to read between the lines, learn to understand what these stories mean. This is a true, genuine story from the highly credible, the highly credible and reliable Athletic. Remember, the Athletic were one of the first outlets to speak about the Jack Greeley situation at the beginning of this week, and it ended up happening. I understand that there are some journalists, especially from the continent, that have said there is no way, shape or form Lukaku is moving. It may still not happen. It may still not happen. Maybe Inter Milan 
raise the money elsewhere. Maybe just maybe they don't Chelsea don't offer enough money. But this is a deal that is alive. This is a deal that is advanced. And this is a deal that does have the potential to get done straight, straight up. Simple as that. Uh, Terry, what do you mean by bid? Well, we know when it comes to the football terrace, we we don't do the wishy-washy nonsense here. Whether it's an informal offer or a direct bid, it's the same difference. One just protects you from PR. By the way, if Chelsea don't land Lukaku, if their third attempt fails, you will see a journalist say no official bid has been made. As soon as you start seeing journalists say no official bid made, you know that a proper attempt has been made. It's the default reaction now to a bid being rejected straight up. Top Dog here says, I'm on this Harlan to Chelsea news um, more, which maybe read that again. I'm on this Harlan to Chelsea news more, which I still think is the main target, but Harlan isn't possible. Uh, then I'd be happy to go for Lukaku. And I listen, I, I was thinking about it a lot this morning. I was reading through the news, preparing for this morning's show, and a few things were going through my mind. The first thing was, I still think the Harlan news is on, personally. However, however, at the same time, I thought, what if they've already put the informal offer in for £150 million and it's been rejected, it's been turned down, Dortmund are not budging. What we've said all along is that Chelsea would be silent on it until it was accepted. So maybe they've completely turned their attention to Lukaku because they've put that 150 offer in already. And they're just trying to keep things as quiet and as silent as possible as they move forward. All these things are a possibility right now. What my belief is, having read through a number of these stories, is Harlan's still the number one target. But there comes a point where you have to move on from that. Chelsea want to start the season with a new striker. Chelsea ideally do not want to go two or three games into the season without a recognized prolific goal scorer. It could be the difference in your season. It really could. It really, really could. Um, third bid, geez, they are serious then. Yeah, I mean, uh, Chelsea wouldn't brief the Athletic and say that they're, they're confident of landing Inter, uh, the Inter striker, if they were not going to make another bid. It, it just doesn't make any sense. If they were not going to make another bid, they wouldn't brief anybody about Lukaku. Unless you think it's a complete and utter smokescreen. And maybe that's the rationale behind it. But they're still, you, you know, that that's it. Um, let's do some, maybe. I don't know. I don't necessarily believe in smokescreens too much here today. Uh, God's here says lies. Take it up, my friend. I know you're a Man City fan. Take it up with the athletic, highly reliable source, my friend. Uh, there we go. David here says Harlem was told. Sorry. Harlan has told Chelsea, sorry, but I want to play for the best club in the world next year and play with Oli and with my mate, Jaden Sancho. <laughs> well, he might have. Listen, it, it, for me as a Man United fan, I want Chelsea to get Lukaku. Take, if I be biased for a moment, I want them to get Lukaku because them signing Lukaku means, it means 100% bona fide that Man United have a chance of getting Harlan next year. It legitimately opens that door. I suddenly think that um, Real Madrid then become the, the instant favourites to get that deal done, to land that deal, to get it over the line. Um, that's my belief. I, I think that's what happens almost instantly. But of course, if Chelsea land in this summer, I don't think Haaland will ever play for Man United. So as a United fan, it keeps that hope alive uh, that that deal, that deal could get done. Updating, 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 updating. There we go. Let's do some more of these comments here. We're going to open the lines very soon for you to come in. Terry, it's not happening, Fab said. Listen, uh, do you know what? I want Fab to be wrong on this one and not because I want Fab getting any kind of criticism. I almost want Fab to get something wrong because it's getting to a point now where we just keep consistently seeing so many other credible journalists disregarded. And I almost want it to happen to prove the point that it's exceedingly 
stupid of us to rely on one person, one source, one outlet for our information because they don't know everything. And, and, and Fabrizio is an absolute don. What he has created is amazing. But to just disregard, and he said it himself the other day on his own stream, stop disregarding other journalists. Yet his fans keep disregarding other journalists. It's, I know we live in a polarized society, but it's, it's almost it comes to a point now where it's like it's highly embarrassing now. And I'm not having a pop at you particularly, but I'm just saying, the Athletic do not write this story without there being any credibility in it. Dean Jones has said to us numerous, like this Simon John, uh, Johnson story this morning in The Athletic just echoes everything all summer that you continuously heard from Pete O'Rourke and from Dean Jones. The Lukaku situation isn't dead. It's tough and it's hard, but it isn't dead. There's a belief at Chelsea that, can, that it can be done. They are chipping away working at it. The number one choice we know is Haaland. So maybe that's why they haven't gone all in yet. But it was always a possibility. Now, of course, Fabrizio has come out and said what the, what the Italian giants have said, that it isn't happening in any way, shape or form. And it may not happen. So then you could go back and say, see, told you he was right. But things change and they can change very, very quickly in football, which is one of the biggest parts of Fabrizio's mantra. He reports on what he's being told. He openly admits the world can change overnight. A big money big comes in. Lukaku says, I've got to go. You know, it, it's, it, it really could happen. Simon Johnson at The Athletic is not making up a story to create clicks and headlines this morning. It's simply not what The Athletic does. Um, they don't need to do it. They're a subscription-based publication. They don't, they don't, do, they don't do it in any other way. Um, let's have a few, few more look at things here. Uh, Fabrizio has a lot more contacts in Italy, though. If he says Lukaku is staying, then Lukaku is staying. And he couldn't, of course he does. Of course he does. And But my point is that the, the world could change tomorrow. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens with this one. We'll see what happens with this one. I'm still very, very, very sure. Um, I'm very, very, very sure that Chelsea are going to sign a striker. It's going to be, I, I still think it's going to be one of the two between Lukaku and Haaland. Let's see what this week puts out. And listen, as I say, we report in and aggregate in the news, but I just feel that we shouldn't be disregarding every other outlet because our favorite outlet says something different. As Chris said here, didn't Fabrizio get the Fonseca thing uh, wrong at Spurs? Everybody did. And that's, but do you know why everybody got that wrong, including Alistair Gold? Because Spurs briefed them on what was happening and then it changed. Spurs brief saying it's done, practically done. It will be over the line in the next few hours. And then at the last moment, it fell apart. That wasn't Fabrizio's fault. That wasn't Alistair's goals' fault. The situation changed. And when the situations change, it, it does what it does. And, you know, again, I defended Fabrizio on that because it wasn't, his, it wasn't his fault in any way, shape or form that the information changed after he mentioned it and put it out there. Um, let's do some more of your comments. If you don't think it's happening, then get involved. Give us a call. Tell us why. You, but I don't listen. I don't want you to say I don't think it's happening because of Fabrizio. I want you to engage your brain. You're a brilliant footballing community. I know you have um, your own thoughts on this. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear what you're thinking. I want to hear you think for yourself today. We're going to share the link now for you to come on and give us your views and give us your opinions this morning. Make sure you've smashed that like button. A lot of people disregarding this news today, which is absolutely fair, as I've always said. I think it's sensible to not just disregard every other credible outlet. But if that's what you're choosing to do, of course, that's your choice. Phone up now and have your say. Um, EJ here says, £5.99 a year, dude, to sub to the Athletic in my country's currency. I think they are buying nobody. They are getting ings, is what EJ has got to say here. Um, thank you very, very much, Dyson, uh, for the lovely, kind words this morning. Someone here says Fabrizio said Partey was 100% staying at Athletic Atletico. It's, he maybe I didn't, I didn't know that. Listen, Fabrizio will get things wrong. Every journalist will get not get things wrong, but they'll put out information, and the world changes. It, it just is what it is. Um, people believe what they want to believe in in regards to this. I remember uh, Custis, Neil Custis at the Sun saying. 
it, it won some that Man United had put a bid in for, for Neymar and it was laughed at. He was ridiculed actually by a number of other journalists as well. And then Neymar and Barcelona, like two months later, admitted that it was true. So it was like, I, I don't necessarily like have any sympathy for Custis, but at the same time, I'm thinking people have just got to slow down a little bit sometimes and, and maybe wait for the dust to settle. Remember, P PR makes it even harder now because if Chelsea's attempt for Lukaku doesn't happen, they will deny all knowledge of it. They'll say, nope, we had nothing to do with this. Who I'm really intrigued by at the minute is maybe the most credible um, Chelsea journalist out there, Matt Law, because we just haven't heard or seen anything from him since the 17th of July, two weeks. I, he's taken a holiday. I wonder, I wonder if his holiday coincides with Chelsea news. Like almost he's been briefed by the club. We're not going to do anything until these dates. So go and enjoy your holiday. <laughs> And we'll be ready to brief you when you come back because no, no update from him since the 17th of July. But you go, that, again, that is me stretching there and looking at, at crazy theories there, looking at crazy theories there. Uh, Karen here says, no, Lukaku, please. Only Harlan or nothing. Go for a striker next summer. Big Rom return. Why not a proven striker for club and striker? I think you mean club and country there, but I hear you. People need to realize that there are many, many credible journalists out there. They are, they are out there and they have just as good a credible news out there. I, I hear what you're saying there, but let's see what there, there are lots that need to be listened to in, 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 in terms of these situations. But, but this is the way the world works now. If, a, if there's a journalist you like, he's always on point. You always defend him. If he gets something wrong, it's nah, the world changes, not his fault. If it's a journalist you don't like, you're straight on his neck. So, of course, Arsenal fans are not particularly keen on Dean Jones. Why? Because he got the Pepe thing wrong. The irony is when he put out the news about Pepe, it wasn't wrong. But the thing with Dean is, Dean's quite, Dean gives full-on opinion as opposed to just passing on information. So he was, Arsenal fans felt disrespected by him. Thus, they still have an out, like a backlash towards him now. Um, but then when he puts out the news that things are progressing with a, a player they like, they're all suddenly quoting him and sharing his news. It just is what it is. Um, people love to have their, 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 their egos massaged. One of the best things that Fabrizio does, he makes every fan base and every club feel loved. And that's a very, very important thing he does. Nabil here with a super chat says, I told you Lukaku isn't coming, uh, but yet you disregard all tier one journalists. Chelsea should go for Haaland next year. Poor Chelsea fans got misled. What? <laughs> Nabil, what are you talking about? No Chelsea fan has been misled about Lukaku, not by any journalist, not by any outlet. No outlet has said it's a guarantee to happen. No outlet has said they think the deal is 100% going to go through. A lot of outlets have reported that Chelsea have been working on something behind the scenes, that Chelsea have been chipping away that he's number one target, but also that it's a very hard deal. In terms of tier ones, so the likes of Jan Fjortov and Fabrizio have said it would take a crazy bid, somewhere in the region of £150 million to get it done. And then, it, from Jan's point of view, they think the club would then sell. That's the only news that's been put out by anybody. The news of Chelsea wanting him and Roman being willing to pay that money is very different from people saying the deal is going to be done. If people are misled by Chelsea want the player and are willing to pay 150 million pounds, they should listen and read the, the newspaper articles or listen to the content that's being created because nobody at any stage has said that this deal is 100% going to go through. And no, Chelsea, I don't think any Chelsea fans feel misled either because no Chelsea fan that I've seen comment on the terrace, phone into the terrace, or, or talk about it online has said that they feel this deal is 100% going to happen based on the news that they've received. They have a gut feeling themselves. Now, Bill here, my friend. It was a very easy prediction to say that Haaland wasn't going to go to Chelsea because it was a very difficult deal. But my brother, you're clutching here, my friend. But thank you very much for that super chat. Thank you very, very much indeed. That's made me smile this morning. Um, it made me smile. He said Lukaku. Uh, sorry, he said Haaland. Fair enough. Um, there we go. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, you will know what I meant. I love Nabil. Nabil's, Nabil's an interesting character. He watches the terrace a lot. 
But he seems to get very angry about the news that we share. I don't really get why. Um, but there we go. There we go. Um, why didn't I get a notification? YouTube playing games. Yeah, they do play games. That's why you've got to sign up to our Telegram group. The link is in the description below, and you'll always get a notification that way. So don't wait for YouTube. Join the Telegram group. Uh, just look in and you'll always get that notification. We're going to go to some of your calls now. I want to hear what you're all saying, what you're thinking and what you are feeling. First up, Kai is here with me this morning. Lukaku News starting to pick up pace now. New striker on the way. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, good morning, Terry. How are you? I, yeah, I'm very good. I mate. mean, I've always I've always said the Haaland deal is, is very difficult to do. So I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm the kind of guy who don't build up my expectations because I know I'm going to be disappointed. But Lukaku is, is the second best. I still love Lukaku. I think he improved a lot in Italy. And I think he'd be like a very, very uh, good player for Chelsea. So I, I don't mind. Lukaku could be good. Lukaku would be good. If, if we can sign near any of them, I would be happy for him, man, because he's a really, really good player. So I wouldn't mind him. Yeah, no, I I, I, I agree. I think that if you're not going to get Haaland and you end up with Lukaku, it's, it yep. is a very good piece of business. It's a player that will undoubtedly... Um, improve your team, improve the finishing element of what you do. And then it just puts this saga to bed. You can move on and focus on the next two or three years now with a very attacking lineup. I think Lukaku, for me, makes you, gives you the ability to win the league. And, and that's the most important thing. Yes, the Haaland deal, it's it's the most glamorous deal you can do because of the, the hype around the player. But in terms of finishing ability right now, Lukaku and him are very much on par. The only thing is that, you know, Lukaku's at his peak. How good is Haaland going to become? Haaland might become better than him in, in two, three, four years' time, but Chelsea are a here and now club. We know that to, to a degree. They, they have a process that is future proof, but they want players in the here and now that are going to deliver for them. Lukaku can do that. It's an excellent piece of business. And if you have him ready for the start of the season, how confident will you be as a Chelsea fan in terms of you know, challenging for the title and winning major honours again next year? Um, I mean, I would be confident, but I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be overconfident because we still have uh, uh, City. Still have you guys who have signed uh, for me the best winger in the world right now, which is Sancho. You also got Varane, who's a very, very good centre back. So you guys improved as well, you know. So, you, so you can't. You guys can't use the Ole excuse anymore. Even though I like Ole, you know, I like Ole. And I, and and, and uh, yeah, but we'll see. I think the three teams that are gonna play for it are United, uh, City, and uh, and Chelsea. If if we get Lukaku, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, Havers is also looking very very impressive, you know, and uh, and the fact that Lukaku played so well with uh, Martinez, who's also kind of a second striker, kind of give me hope that uh, Havers is going to show uh, better numbers next season because this he looks like very very confident. Even for Germany, when you saw him play for Germany, and yesterday the goal he scored against Arsenal, uh, he looks a lot more confident after the Champions League goal that he scored. So. I'm excited for the new season, man. It's only two weeks ago, two weeks away. And this is why I love the Premier League. You you never know what's gonna happen, and and, and it's gonna start soon. And I, and I can't wait, can't wait there. Yeah, and 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 this is listen. Everything you said there earlier about Manchester United in terms of needing the challenge, I agree with. Yep. Um, I think Kai Havertz is gonna have a a beast of a beast of a season. He's really gonna level up this year. He looked he looked nice and tidy yesterday. And listen, with a player coming in. Don't sleep on Timo Werner, Chelsea fans, because I think with, a, with if a prolific goal scorer comes in and takes that burden away and takes that burden away, then I think you'll get a better performance from him. Him yeah. knowing that he doesn't need to be the goal scorer. I think that's what in the end last season crippled him a little bit was that element of I need to be the goal scorer. I need to be the man that, 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 that delivers and gets this done. I actually think this, this will be a, you know, a nice way of taking that pressure away from him and giving him that opportunity just, just to focus on his game. And, you know, you might end up, I mean, he, his numbers weren't as bad as everyone made out last year. When you actually break yep. down his numbers, they weren't awful, but I think you could see him almost be sort of like the you know, like death by a thousand cuts. You might get to the end of the campaign with him and go, Jesus, look, he scored 18 goals and got 12 assists. And it's almost goes under the radar a little bit, if that makes sense. And, you know, maybe that really, I just, yeah, I'm scared about it. As a Man United fan, I've said all summer, if you if you land that prolific goal scorer, yep. legitimately, I'm scared of you because that's the that's the missing piece. And look, you're closing in on 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 Kunde. Um that, that deal will um 
they just got to resolve this swap deal element and they're still it's severe have come back again they're looking at other swap deals. they're so desperate severe not to get all the cash that they they just don't want to give 30 percent away to yeah, uh, yeah, I heard that, I heard that. they don't want to give 30 percent away because it then damages uh, you know and eats into who they can bring in and buy so we'll see what happens there but kai mate great call mate thank you for coming yeah, on having you there, buddy thank you for having me on Terry. Have, have, take care bye-bye thank you mate thank you very very much indeed the bill here with another super chat says Go back to your tweets and see all the uh, all the comments. Chelsea fans were excited and acted that Haaland was coming. Um, I'm hardly getting angry. Love the show. Just having fun. I hear you, my bro. And I'm just having fun with you. It's all banter. And listen, Chelsea fans are allowed to get excited. I, I wouldn't say... Listen, it's not about people being misled. No one's going to feel misled. Um, you have to assess the news as the news. And then make a judgment call on it. And that's why I say to people... I, I listen to Fabrizio, I listen to Matt Law, I listen to Dean, but I still have my own brain. I still listen to what everybody's saying and go, but I think this. And that's the most important thing here. Don't be sheep. Don't be lemons. Don't be lemons. And make sure you've hit that like button this morning, people. Let's get this past 500 likes while we're live on the air. Let's get this done, people. Could the Harlan deal be off? Could Lukaku be on his way to Chelsea Football Club? I want your thoughts. I want your feelings. I want to hear from you now. The link to call in is inside the, is in on the live comment section. Make sure you get that done. And please go and follow us across all of our social media platforms. All the links for, for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, our brand new notification group are below. We are launching a brand new fantasy league show this week on the football terrace. So a little bit away from the transfer news here. We're launching a brand new fantasy show on the football terrace this week. Name will be revealed. Our partner will be revealed. The winner, the winning player of our fantasy league that we were involved with will be awarded a prize of £200,000. If you finish second, it's £75,000. If you finish as low as 10th, it's £10,000. We have got a prize pool of £1 million cash to give away to the players of the new, of the new Premier League Fantasy League that we are in conjunction with and in partnership with. More to come this week. Thursday, we're going to be launching it and bringing it directly to you. So make sure you stay with the Football Terrace this week. You have notifications turned on. The notification group is more important because you'll receive full updates on that. But if you are a avid fantasy football fan, get involved with our new with us and our new partners with the chance to win £200,000 tax-free cash um, at the end of the season. There we go. Let's, let's go to some more calls here today. Timothy here says, it's simple logistics. I don't care if they come from five players or one player. We need goals. Yeah, of course. 100, 110%. That, that's the most important thing. Next on the show, we're going to go to Mohamed Ibrahim. Mohamed Ibrahim is here. Who do you support, buddy? Um, Chelsea. Lovely. What, what do you make of this news about Lukaku this morning? Do you think it's real? Do you think it's a smoke screen? Give me your thoughts and feelings, mate. Um, I don't think it's a smoke. I don't think it's a smoke screen. I think um, that um, if we, I think we are generally in for Lukaku. Okay, go on then. Uh, are you happy about it? Sad? Upset? What, what's your thoughts on it, mate? Um, he's my n number one choice, so I'm very happy that we are um, linked him. Number one choice. Why Lukaku over Haaland? Um, he's, he brings Premier League experience. Um, he proof it like, for, like in, in the big stage for like many years, and he got that he got that experience that Haaland doesn't have. I mean, you can't deny that. He definitely has that Premier League experience out there, my friend. He really, really does. Um, do you think you'll close this deal off or, or do you think that it's too difficult to get done? Who, who you, Journalistically, who are you trusting here? Are you trusting the Athletic that it's a deal that's on that Chelsea are confident about? Or do you trust the likes of Fabrizio that have said it just doesn't happen in any way, shape or form? Um, I, I trust all, um, what is it, journalists. There we go. Listen, mate. There we go. Top man. Thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you very, very much. Really appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Let's go on here. Godfrey's now with us. Godfrey this morning is calling in. What are you saying, Godfrey? How are you, man? Yeah, I'm very, very well. What's, what's on your mind? I, uh, to be honest, I don't think uh, the Lukaku deal will work for us because uh, Inter Milan made it clear they, they won't sell it, him to us. Also, Haaland is very difficult, but uh, I see the Haaland deal going through. You see the Haaland deal going through. Do you think the bids? Do you think the bids going to yes. come in this free this week? Yes, I, from today until Friday, something will happen. Certainly. Mm, inter, inter, interested in Godfrey. Thank you for that call, my friend. Enjoy your day, brother. Look, look at that. He's a happy man. He's excited about what Chelsea are going to bring in here. Um, interested in indeed. CFC chats is coming on with us next. Uh, Nabil here says, I also heard Pogba's leaving. Is that true? I'm scared to say Nabil in case people get misled. <laughs> Listen, every day I read something different about Paul Pogba. Every day I'm told something different. My view is this, and I trust what Rob came on the show and said on Thursday last week. Pogba's happy at the club, but it's about him deciding what the best next move for him is. He's happy at the football club. He respects the football club. He's happy to stay at the football club, but he wants to be paid what he thinks he's worth. Man United have to work out whether they think he's worth that kind of money. The example Rob gave was very, very interesting. Let's say Manchester United today Offering 450 a week and he signs and he stays. But then misses another third of the season through injury this year and next year. Maybe his injury problems continue to get worse. United find themselves in another in, in, in like an Abamyang situation or maybe another De Gea situation where you're paying big money to a player who just isn't available for one reason or isn't performing because of it. So Man United have to weigh up how much money they're willing to, willing to pay him as an example. I think the club that offers him the best contracts is who he'll go to. And a lot of people scoff at that, but they shouldn't because he's a professional footballer that wants to be paid what he thinks, you know, wants to be paid what he thinks he's worth. I also think he has to weigh up signing for Man United or PSG and look at his desire and his, his lifelong dream to play for Real Madrid. Because if he signs for PSG or renews with Man United, it's almost impossible for him to play for Real Madrid. So there's lots for him to consider. I think this week we're going to see some movement with this situation because he's back at Carrington probably right this moment. So let's see what happens there. Thank you for that super chat, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, CFC Chats is with me now. Big news this morning about Lukaku, my friend. Give me your thoughts and feelings on it. Uh, first of all, good evening, Terry. I hope you're doing well, mate. Uh, I'm just going to say Sunday fun day. I mean, you know, that's what's all been all over Twitter today. You know, Harlan's been, you know, saying stuff and then Chelsea's been mocking what Harlan's saying on their social media. So I'm super confident about Harlan coming. You know, Lukaku's rejected us three times. And with the reporter situation, you know, I've always said I don't know who to believe. I don't really believe one journalist because every journalist can be wrong, you know, and that's, that's just a fact. You know, they're not going to get everything 100%. Correct. So, in my opinion, I see Haaland coming more than Lukaku because, obviously, I said this about Martinez. Inter Milan are falling apart, but they still need to have that satisfaction where they can possibly get top four for Serie A. So, I don't see Lukaku leaving Inter Milan, and I see Haaland coming within the next couple of weeks. I, I honestly think it's, it's a done deal. And there was a report that came out that the Haaland deal could be confirmed uh, just before the German Cup. So, again... As another reporter, we don't know if it's true, but I have to find out. I think what's interesting about it, and a, a, a lot of what you've said, you know, there's, there's a lot of truth in, in, in what you've said in terms of the, the Haaland situation. There's no, for me, there is, there is correlation here. We did a video on it yesterday. Is Haaland going to be re, uh, resolved in the space of the, ne of the next week? We put that out there, and then within an hour or two, not because of us, but then you see... Fyotov talk about the German Cup and the deadline. That's Whether it's an official deadline or they believe that's up until that point is when they'll sell him is, remains to be true. You then get the Lukaku news, which also coincides with Lotaro Martinez. So there's a lot of play here. When you actually start breaking it down and not focusing on just what one journalist said, you've got Inter. The other week when everybody... This is why I think Lukaku can happen. Because even though Inter have played it down by saying not happening, not selling him, when it comes to the Martinez news, 
it was very much into want to sell him or open to selling him because they think it will secure Lukaku staying. Well, if you're not selling Lukaku regardless, you're not pushing. Why are you pushing Martinez towards Arsenal? And they are pushing Martinez towards Arsenal or an exit because they want to raise the money. So sometimes you have to look at those two situations and take out all your bias towards particular journalists that you like and respect or you dislike and think about it logically. Why are Inter looking to sell one of the best young tackers in the world to raise money if there's no financial issues? And if they've still got those financial issues, they will outweigh keeping Lukaku if the right offer comes in. At the same time, from Chelsea's point of view, they're in a predicament here, which is why I think this week is going to be pivotal because Arsenal are pushing to get Martinez done. Now, if Martinez tomorrow says, I'm not going Arsenal, tells them no, Chelsea can relax a little bit. You might see this protrude on a little bit longer. However, however, if, for instance, Martinez goes to Arsenal and agrees this week, your second option of Lukaku is taken away from you. It can't happen as a deal. So there's all these things going on, and that's why that's why maybe this week, week and a half, is going to be so exciting because there's a number of deals that almost knock onto each other. And if and from Arsenal's point of view, if they suddenly don't get Martinez and you guys sign Lukaku or Haaland respectively, it's very likely that they're then going to go for Tammy Abraham, the ex West Ham employee who's highly credible uh, in transfers, especially when it comes to, especially when it comes to. Um, West Ham has said that Tammy's now doesn't want to do in West Ham and he wants to go to Arsenal. And of course he does because Arsenal are a bigger and better club. So there's all these little things at play here. And I think it's almost who gets their target first. Is it going to be Arsenal or is it going to be Chelsea? And I think that's what's going on here at the same, which I don't think should be ignored. But from a from a neutral looking at this, it's very exciting to watch this play out. Very exciting. Indeed. I think I think it is very exciting, but I think the more Lukaku going is that he's not interested in going to Chelsea because I think there was a formal agreement. He said he does not want to come. So I think I agree with Inter needing to push him out, obviously, because they're in bankrupt. So they're getting Martinez out. They got Hakimi out. They want to get Lukaku out. But, you know, I think it's more him personally doesn't want to leave. Yeah, I think I think there's a part of that. I think in, I think in, in Lukaku's mind... And I understand this train of thought is I'm killing it here. I'm settled here. If I move, it could all go wrong for me. But the other side of it, if I go back to some of the first conversations I had this summer with Dean, with Dean Jones, there, there is also this de- reported desire. It's not Dean. I'm a liar. Christophe Terreur, most credible Belgian journalist in the world, said that there is a desire. There is a desire within Lukaku to prove people wrong, that he was a, wasn't was a flop at Chelsea, that he wasn't a flop in the Premier League, that he can do it for a big club at that level. So there is a bit of a desire there as well. But I think Lukaku has played it right this summer. Act like he doesn't want to leave. And if Inter Milan end up accepting the bid for financial reasons, it can be spun by Lukaku's team that actually I'm doing Inter Milan a favour by by fixing their financial problems mm-hmm. and leaving with a very heavy heart. It's it, it honestly it fits like a glove in terms of PR, but we know what fan and football fans are t- we're all stupid. We buy into the PR every single time. Do you know what I mean? It's as simple as that. Like you. Man United fans could hate on a, a particular player. Fergie will come out and say this player is one of the best I've ever seen. And a massive percentage of the fan base go, <laughs> Oh, my mind's changed then. Because Fergie said, <laughs> like when someone credible says something, everyone listens. Do you know what I mean? It's just it's just one of the it's one of them things there, my friend. But listen, great call as ever, CFC. Uh, and we'll speak to Appreciate you again. On. Stop, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you, All the best. Thank you. I like you set up there. Next on the show, we're going to go to Varan Martin. Varan Martin, welcome to the terrace. What do you want to say? Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello, mate. What do you want to say? See, I want to say about Lukaku. I hope that Lukaku is not coming to Chelsea because I know Chelsea cannot afford to pay Inter Milan 130 million euro. Um, I mean, Say that Chelsea, Chelsea can't afford to pay for him. Yeah, be, 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 because the, the fee is much. Why can't they afford it? Yeah, be, be, because they cannot. The one thousand euro, they, they, they can use it for two two more players because they are, they are going for Kunde. If they sign Lukaku for one thousand, how they can't sign Kunde? Kunde. Because they've got the money, mate. Chelsea yeah. I, 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 I don't know where you're getting this from. Chelsea have got a billionaire owner 
who would happily spend if it's one thirty? If I don't think Lukaku would cost one thirty anyway, Lukaku would be more a hundred million, right? And Kunde is costing you about thirty million to forty million, so you could easily spend one thirty, one forty, one fifty on players, my bro. One hundred percent. But last season, Chelsea spent almost 200, 200 million euros, and this season they are they are, they are they are coming to that amount again. But they can, but you can afford it. Do you know how rich your owner is? Let's see. Let, let's watch and see. Yeah, mate. Listen, if you don't get those players, it isn't because you can't afford it. It's because the clubs say no to the bids. Okay, it's okay. If you're putting the bids in. You've got the money. <laughs> He's gone. If you're putting the bids in, you have the money. I, I, I mean, Chelsea are not issuing these checks. They can't afford to cash, bruv. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that, that's, that's a new one. That is a new one on me. Um, as Strongest Villain here says, sorry, Strongest Civilian here says, this is Roman Abramovich we are talking about. Absolutely. I I can't believe a Chelsea fan said that. I don't think we've got the money. You've got the money, all right. It is there. That money is sitting there, ready to go. Ready to go, 110%. Julian here says, Lukaku also, Lukaku also likely to stay longer if he can dominate things at Chelsea. Haaland will be gone in, what, three seasons and is short-term. Lukaku, long-term option with Prem experience. Either way, Chelsea win. Yeah, I don't see it as I see it as win win for Chelsea. It's either you sign the best up and coming number nine in the world, or you sign one of the best number nines in the world here and now. Either way, you're getting a prolific goal scorer to put that ball in the back of the net, and it makes you one of the favourites to win the Premier League uh, without a without a shadow without a shadow um, of a doubt without a shadow of a doubt at all. Um. He was getting cooked. Oh, yeah, listen, I, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I just didn't understand. We haven't got the money. I'm like, bruv, you put the bids in. <laughs> the, bid, the bids are there, bruv. They're there. The money's there. Um, just Looking says, we've already made a £50 million pound plus in the sales of play players this year as well. We'd be nearly £100 million if we get 40 for Tammy. Listen, there's, there's Tammy, there's Loftus-Cheek, there's Barkley that can be sold. Look, Zuma's going to obviously be a make weight in one of these deals. If not, then he's going to be sold for about 20 to 30 million. You're probably still going to raise another 70 to 80 million more in sales this summer as well. Like, it's, it's, a, it's, that's the best call I've ever had in my life. I love it. As a Chelsea fan who thinks you're broke, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it's funny. You know, in life, you, you, sometimes you see things like, I can't laugh, I can't laugh, but I've got to. Uh, Winter Surfers here with us this morning. Make sure you're smashing that that button, that button, like button this morning, Chelsea fans. Make sure you're getting that done. Winter Surfers here, what are you saying, mate? Um, Just to have a Chelsea fan, it's okay because Roman's going to enter your uh, fantasy Premier League anyway to try and win that million pound pack. So uh, it's all good <laughs> if he's worried about our finances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah get involved in it. Yeah, if you win the football terrace uh, two hundred thousand pound giveaway, then yeah, give it to Roman. It might be able to help him a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll find on one of his massive yachts. I'm sure he'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, you know what I mean. Get, what's it? What's you know? Let's get a GoFundMe going. Let's get, <laughs> let's get, we need to set Chelsea up a food bank. Are the players eating okay? Jesus well, Christ! I think we should start twenty four hour streams. You know, like sort of like the telephone <laughs> to uh, help Roman out. He needs. He needs. He needs. He needs to feed. He needs to eat. You know what I mean? He's starving, but he's all good. Yeah, no, I hear you completely. I hear you completely. Um, what's your take on this news this morning about Lukaku, mate? <laughs> um, I love it. It just keeps flipping and changing. I mean, yesterday, we, I mean, even, I know you had a show as well, but Haaland was maybe this week. It was like the deadline week or something like that. Now it's Lukaku with a third bid. Um, I don't know whether it's still... I don't know whether to to believe it or not. Um, I'm I've always said to you, I'm one of those ones that until I see it, I, I don't believe it. I'll take a pinch of salt. A third bid coming in, um, very strange. But like you said, they're trying to push Latoro Martinez out to Arsenal. So it's like I don't know if it, I don't think Inter would sell Lukaku if they can get money for Martinez as well. Um, and I just think maybe it's more of a smoke screen from Chelsea with the Harlem thing because if you it's it, they know the price 
for Haaland and they know what they need to do and then they're going if they're going back to the car crew then why aren't they just doing it why did they have to wait three bids to do it do you know what i mean it's like yeah. I, I do just, just, yeah i do understand that it's but like John, johnny boy blue here on twitter put make put a post out someone sent to me and it's i i do love it he says here like fabrizio said no bids chelsea aren't stupid they only make official bids when they get accepted so how could Lukaku have had two bids it's all about whether you buy into the semantics of the matter. Yeah. Chelsea definitely made a offer of sorts for yeah. uh, Haaland and Lukaku, but it's we've moved into this world now where semantics are at play. There's unofficial bids, there's informal inquiries, there's offers via intermediaries, but they all amount to the same thing. They're all a bid to try and sign the football player. It only turns now into an official bid when it's accepted. So, Fabrizio is right. No official bids have been made by Chelsea. But yeah. that's why I say, don't take it with a pinch of salt, but read between the lines. It's Someone said to me the other day, like, there's been no contact between Chelsea and Haaland's camps, according to like, the big journalists. So, like, everything people have said about personal terms being no problem is, isn't true. I'm like, well, the same people that say there's been no contact also say personal terms won't be a problem. So if there's been no direct or indirect contact, then how do they know that? And secondly... There's definitely been contact between the camps. And we know this yeah. because his father and his agent did a fucking European tour <laughs> and visited all the <laughs> and visited all the clubs. People, exactly. What it is with people is they 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 people love semantics when it suits their agenda and it and it and it suits what they want to happen and then ignore it in reverse. The the cold hard like they it, it's been this to me. I think both these deals are still available to Chelsea. Both yeah. these deals have had bids go in via intermediaries that are you know informal offers or whatever it may be and i do believe this week they're going to try and close this off i think part of it is because arsenal are pushing for martinez and inter are trying to offload martinez because that would stop that would take away your mm. your backup player so if that backup player is going to go you need to get to a resolution with, with with dortmund because if you can't get him you then need to go for lukaku otherwise the most embarrassing thing for chelsea would be you miss out on Harlan, but then you can't get Lukaku because yeah. you never raise the money for selling someone else. I think it's all coming to a head nicely. Well, that's what I think. That's what I want us to do. If Harlan's, uh, that, these are my top two choices. If Harlan doesn't work out, I don't want us having weeks of build up with um, Lukaku. I want us like the next phone call be to Inter Man saying, "Hi, this is 100 million euros for Lukaku. Take you know, take it or leave it." That's what I want us to do. I don't want us to spend us because we spent so long apparently negotiating with Har for Haaland, it, it, we should be having this backup deal for Lukaku straight away if it doesn't work out. That's what all that's what all big clubs should be doing. Not like going, one deal, okay, now I've got to start all over again with this other deal. It should be bang like that. They should and, be and, working and, on multiple deals. And, 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 and that's they what they're doing. Worked, yeah, of course. And they get worked on this whole time. And these, these two, two bids that have gone in for Lukaku or offers, whatever people want to call them, my assumption, assumption this being, is that they would have been along the lines of, would 80 million be enough? No. no. Okay, a few weeks later. Oh, if we did 90 million, would that be enough? No. Okay, maybe maybe now they've been told by the internet, it'd have to be 100 million or, or they wouldn't do it at all. And yeah. then Chelsea yeah. can sit there and be like, okay, well, we know that's there and that's available. They will accept that. Let's now look at the, let's now go and look at the Lukaku Haaland situation. We know that if we miss out with 120, 130 bid for Haaland, you can do 100 for, for, for Lukaku and it goes through. That's how these things work in a very basic yeah. format. Um, but then it's how you want to report it. For Rizzio's right. There's no official bid that's gone in for Lukaku. But it doesn't need to be an official bid because intermediaries are now... The irony in it is, is that these same journalists that keep playing the PR games with the no bids mm. and no this, they're the ones that have educated us on the fact that the intermediaries are used. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I get so... I, I don't get confused by what they say. I get confused by fans ignore all this stuff but listen it's if you cut through all the bs and the bullshit they are number one and number two targets it feels like we may get a resolution in the next seven to ten days uh, and chelsea's transfer window is really going to kick off i think it could be an exciting week for chelsea winter surfer thank you mate for coming on and Good having time, you mate. really appreciate it mate top top Cheers. man thank you uh super chat here from language of the slaves says before chelsea make a bid the package for harland is being worked out as we speak Riola is probably asking for 600 to 700 uh, though a week. It's a massive package and deal to sort out. It will take time. That is what language of the slaves believes. 
Listen, everyone who's tuned into the Football Terrace this morning, uh, a massive thank you to each and every single one of you. Really do appreciate it. Back today with more content for you. I think it's going to be a very, very busy day indeed. We've also got some big news coming this week for the Football Terrace. Can't wait to tell you all about it. Of course, we are launching our brand new Fantasy League, as we mentioned, where along with our partners, our players will be given. We're giving away to the players over a million pound in cash prizes at the end of the season with the top prize being 200,000 pound for our fantasy league players. More to come on that later on this week. Make sure you sign up to our notification group because our notification group on um, Telegram and our member groups that exist on WhatsApp, they will get the notifications first. They will get the opportunity to join this exclusive, only a maximum amount of people allowed into this fantasy league first so if you want to become a member or you want to sign up to our telegram group go into the link in our description below and go and get signed up to that now Two hundred thousand pounds to the winner of this of our fantasy league at the end of the season via our partners very very excited about that indeed smash that like and that share button but until next time take care goodbye god bless and we'll see you all